Welcome back to yet another episode of Afro Plus Low modding tutorials and in this case I'm just gonna show you one new callback which was also added in the booster update and I didn't want to actually bundle this up with the previous video but I decided just because it's a bit of a different card and a different callback I would make a separate video just to make it a bit easier to index and maybe to show but nevertheless this particular callback is called MC Get Card and what this callback does is whenever a card is spawned into the game this particular function or this callback will be called and then you can control which card actually gets it's spawned and in this case that means you can introduce your own card IDs which means you can introduce your cards into the game naturally and make them spawn when you open up a chest or when you open up a sec or whatever. So if you imagine when you open up a chest and if there is a card in there or b before a card spawns or if there was a card to spawn this particular callback will be called and in this case th what you get is the RNG and that's the RNG class or the object which controls basically the seeded random in the game and you would use this to generate your random number. Then we have the current card and let's say that you open up a chest and there's the Algis rune there and I believe the ID for the Algis rune is 9, 90, 39 sorry and that means that this particular ID or this value will be 39 and that means you can check whatever the current card is a rune you can check whatever it's something else but essentially it just tells you which particular card has, the game has decided to actually spawn into the game. Then you have the playing and that means whatever that pool where that card has spawned can contain playing cards. And then the runes also just tells you can it contain runes. And then the last one is can it contain only runes. So for example when you enter a second secret room which has only runes that particular pool can only contain runes and basically if you want to introduce a new rune or whatever and you want to in introduce it in that second secret room you would use this or at least you would check if it's true when you actually spawn a new card. So that might all sound a bit confusing but essentially if you want to make your card ID or how this particular callback works First of all, you would generate a random number based on the number of cards you have. I believe this is just the cards that are in the game, so if you added your own cards, you would increase or increment this number by 1 or 2. And let's just say that our card ID is 50, so we just created a new card that does whatever, it doesn't really matter. And when we actually spawn into the game, then what we do is check if the random ID that we generated is the same as our card ID, and if it is, then we just return our card ID, and that means that the chest that we open, which would naturally spawn a card otherwise, would spawn our particular card. So, this is not only used in this particular case, but you can also manipulate other cards spawning. So let's say that if you want more Chaos cards to show up, that's definitely something that you can do. Let's say that you make a challenge where every single card that spawns is a Sun card, for example. This is something that you can do with this particular callback. What you would just have to do is instead of returning our card ID, you would just have to return the ID of the card that is the Sun card. And for example, if you create a new playing card, what you would also have to check if the playing card or if this particular variable is true, because this particular variable tells us can the pool where this card has originated from, can it contain playing cards, and only if it's true you would obviously want playing cards in there. So you can imagine again there are some rune rooms which can contain only runes, and if this particular is not true or if it's false, that means you don't really want to spawn your card in there. And that might seem a bit unnecessary, but essentially the game treats runes and cards as the same thing and don't really have a separate way of working and that makes sense when you think about it just because their effects are very similar they're in the same spot and obviously you know what each card or rune does before you use it but in this case th this is just a few additional boolean checks which you can do if you want to introduce something into the game one another thing which you can do which is again maybe a bit silly but if you see maybe maybe you want to create an item which chains every card into just runes and then you would check if the particular id of the card that you get was just a, a regular card and then when that particular ID is of a regular card then you would just return an ID of a rune and that means that in the game a rune would spawn and again this might sound, sound a bit all a little bit confusing so when I get to the game I just have a few of the debug tech showing you what these values actually are and I hope that that will actually make more sense when, when I actually show you. Welcome to the game and to demonstrate this I've given myself sack boy and just spawned a bunch of chests and sacks and basically the, the idea is whenever I open up a sack and if there was gonna be a card in there we're gonna see some text change on the screen. So hopefully when I open up this sack and you can see that the text has changed and in this case what the text indicates is basically the parameters that we get in our functions. 
So the first parameter is user data, zero, CD, whatever. And this actually indicates this is not just a value, a number, but it's an object in memory. In this case, it's the object that belongs to the RNG class. And the RNG class obviously has some functions which you can use to generate random numbers. And in this case, it's probably not that important. But the second one is the ID of the card that was spawned into the game, and that's seven. And the lovers is the, the card that we got out of the sack, and that means that that particular ID of the lovers is seven. And if you just go into to the console and check that out, you can see that that's indeed the case. If you just give ourselves the item 7, or the card with the ID 7, that's the lovers. The third one is a parameter which indicates whatever this pool where this card originated from, which is the sack, can it contain playing cards. And of course you can get playing cards from the sacks, which means that this is true. Then the next one is, can this pool which the, the card came from or the room came from can it contain runes and in this case you can get runes from sex So this is true as well And then the last one is can it contain only runes and obviously because you can also get cards out of it This is false and you could use this information to put your own new cards or runes into the game and obviously what you would do is just return your own ID of the card in that case and I just showed you in the code how to do that but obviously this is not something that's maybe very exciting, or maybe it's not something that you should necessarily see the use of. It has some new uses, and you can make some items with it, like I said before. If you make an item which replaces every card with a rune, this would probably be the best way to do it. But in just, it's basically if you just want to make your code a bit neater, if you want your item or your cards to actually show up into the game naturally, this just allows you for a more seamless transition of that. Welcome to the end of this video as well, and maybe this example again wasn't very showy, it wasn't very expansive, but as always I do try to just give you a general gist of what these particular functions or callbacks do, and then you can use them however you want in your own projects. And in this case what I wanted to showcase is that this is maybe a bit more of an elegant way of introducing cards into the game. And before again, this is one of those quality of life callbacks, before, because before it was entirely possible to make your card spawn in. What you would have to do is check if there's a card on the ground, and if it was just spawned, and then you would maybe check whatever what the ID of that card is and then maybe you would spawn it. But this obviously with all of the boolean variables that go along with it and the IDs that you get, you can make your own iterations, maybe you can swap some cards around, maybe you can make an item which spawns or swaps the runes for cards or anything like that, you know. It, it just allows you to do all of these things very naturally where before you would have to use just a lot of code and a lot of different logic to actually make it happen. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this one guys and I hope to see you next time.